guys welcome back to my channel if you are watching or listening to this on youtube and welcome back if you're listening on your favorite podcast provider so today's episode is something a little different from what i normally discuss uh, normally we discuss spirituality mental health all that stuff but today i'm actually going to focus mainly more on the music and my thoughts and opinions on the music industry and how i'm finding my way in this crazy industry at the moment so grab yourself your favorite beverage and let's get to it so today i am drinking out of my favorite mug again a green tea and jasmine because i'm a creature of habit and i'm trying to stick to a better healthier diet which i've been managing for the last week or so feeling really good eating a lot less processed stuff allowing myself a little bit of a break at the weekend but i'm just being a bit more mindful about what I put in my body and seeing it as fuel other than just stuff I want to eat because I want to. I'm being sensible, I'm being realistic, we are still in a pandemic, if I want to eat a chocolate bar then I'm gonna do it, um, but I'm just being a bit more mindful about it. But yeah, so far so good, I'm feeling a lot healthier. So yeah, I um, put a post up on my Instagram about what other things I should discuss in this podcast and yeah, I'm very passionate about spirituality and mental health, but also I'm very passionate about music and writing music and performing, musical theatre, country, all of that stuff. So this topic came about after um, someone mentioned, well, I actually said, should I do a topic about my thoughts and feelings on the music industry? And loads of you said yes. So here we are. So I, this could be a long episode. I don't know how much I have to say about it until we finished it. So sit tight, because this could be a long one. Um, yeah, my background, for those of you who don't know, is I was primarily heavily involved in musical theatre. And even before that, I was really into dancing. I did ballroom and Latin for the first kind of couple of years from the age of about six to, to about 10, I did ballroom and Latin found myself going into tap jazz and ballet and then the acting came into there and then the singing and all that sort of stuff so I've performed for pretty much my whole life even probably when I was young I was probably singing and dancing and doing some crazy stuff uh, but yeah I've always been doing some sort of performing in some capacity throughout my life but musical theatre was my passion that was my goal that's where I saw myself going Fortunately, it didn't quite pan out that way. Um, I have done a whole talk about kind of what happened with all of that. But basically what it boiled down to was that I wasn't, technically I wasn't small enough. You know, at the time I was a size maybe 14, 16. So I was kind of like on the cusp. And all the way through drama school, I was told you could either go thinner, you could go bigger, you know, then that would change your casting. And I was constantly just battling with why can't I just be myself? Like, I don't, I don't understand this. But anyway, that's what made me turn my back on musical theatre. And I was thinking, do I really want to put this pressure on myself to put food on the table when it's, is it really going to make me happy? You know, there was that, that was, I mean, that's a whole other episode there, right there. But I just wanted to give you a little gist of my background and how I've kind of found myself going into the, the music side and the singer songwriter side and not the musical theatre side. So that all happened. I now found myself living in Wilkshire because I have family down at this side of the world and um, started working, started temping, doing all that fun stuff and started communicating and meeting people and I found myself getting roped into my first ever band which was really exciting. So obviously doing musical theatre and stuff I didn't do a lot of live music, I didn't do a lot of gigging or singing and that sort of stuff. I did little bits here and there with cover bands and things but nothing to the extent that I did when I moved to Wiltshire. And I found myself in an amazing country kind of covers band, we had so much fun I think I was with them for well over a year maybe two years and off the back of that I then met someone else who needed a backing singer for his funk and soul band his name is Clive go and check out his music it's really fun and again I had a whale of a time I got to get dressed up I felt really glam got to sing loads of funk and soul music and that's where I started to kind of think oh maybe this is where I want to be maybe it's the singing that I want to focus more on and to be fair throughout my whole kind of career within performing singing has always been the strongest thing i love acting dancing meh i can dance but i wouldn't say it's like my favorite thing so i knew i had to focus on the singing 
So being in these bands was fantastic because I was getting to meet some other musicians and and all that sort of stuff. And prior to that, I'd started to do some writing. I didn't consider it writing. I have, those who know me, how I have this really weird thing where it's taken me a while to kind of feel comfortable saying I'm a songwriter. And I don't think it was until I got my number one single last year that I realised, okay, maybe I am a songwriter. Maybe this is something I could do. Because before I was just kind of toying around with it and seeing what would happen. But then when that happened, I was like, okay, maybe I am a songwriter. But anyway, going back to that, I'd been dabbling a little bit in songwriting and, and writing some lyrics here and there. And it was through this other band that I was doing the backing vocals for, the drummer was working with um, a singer, a country kind of singer songwriter in Bristol and said, you should really go and have a chat with him and see, you know, if that's something you want to get involved with. Because I was listening to a lot of country from my early teens. Country had always been something that I'd been listening to. And when I was writing, I could hear all my songs in a country style. So it just made sense for me to go down that route. So, um, yeah, obviously met up with this person, had a chat. And then I started to get into get into the whole music industry side of things. And it's really interesting because it is very different from the theatre and musical theatre side. There are some similarities, but, you know, in musical theatre, you're constantly having to have singing lessons. You're looking at your look. You're thinking, is my hair the right colour? Is this the right colour? Am I the right size? Auditions, headshots. There's a lot. There's so much. Whereas when I came into doing the music side, I felt like, I could just 100% be myself. I could dress kind of how I wanted to dress. I could have my hair the color I wanted to have because it's all you, it's all personal experiences. It's It just felt a lot more authentic and that's where I felt happiest and most comfortable. So I obviously wrote my first EP, which that came out in 2017. And yeah, it just, it's so different because when you're in a musical theatre production, you are a part of a team, quite a big team. So being an actor within that team, you don't necessarily have to be in control of promoting it, pushing it out, doing radio interviews, all of that sort of stuff, depending on what sort of role you have within this production. But when it's your own music, you are basically in, ch uh, in charge of that. You know, whether you have a team or not, you're constantly promoting it. You're constantly trying to get radio interviews. Um, you know, reviews, all of that sort of stuff. So to me, I was like, wow, this is, this is a lot. This is intense. <laughs> um, I was really grateful to have the help that I had with my first EP and that was great. So then when I kind of backed off and I wanted to, to try and, and work with other people, that was when I was like, wow, okay, there's a lot of work that goes into this. So I kind of just want to break down and, and kind of let you know the little hints and tips that I have found over the past couple of years with that I've been in this industry that I think have helped. And things that maybe we don't need to stress about too much and just maybe try and enjoy a bit more. So I was quite lucky that I had all of my social media channels kind of already set up to to promote what I was already doing. So I already had social media stuff that was promoting a lot of the musical theatre stuff I was doing. So I basically just changed it, changed my branding to say I was a country singer songwriter and just started to post stuff on there. And it's entirely up to you whether you want to have a personal account and a professional music account. That's totally up to you. I just wanted to have it all on the same thing because it's less posting for me. People get to see who I am behind the music and I feel like that's really important because you kind of just make people realize you are just a human being. And uh, I love seeing that on, on like people like Casey Musgraves and Reba and stuff like that. Like they just post things on their stories of who they are, what they're doing in this pandemic and all that sort of stuff. So I just don't be afraid to be yourself and make a fool of yourself. Like you don't have to have this superior kind of front. If that's not who you are, like let us in. That's what makes you more relatable and well, people will enjoy your music more because they're kind of seeing the behind the scenes stuff. So yeah, again, that's just my opinion. If you want to have a separate account for both, then do it, do whatever you want to do, whatever feels comfortable. What I have realized in this industry over the past couple of years is there really isn't a right or wrong to what you do. 
things change so quickly, algorithms change all the time, that one minute you're told, oh, post at three o'clock on a Wednesday, and then you'll do that, and then you're not getting the engagement or the likes and things that you thought you would. So it's just like, do you know what? Sometimes you just have to throw all of that out the window and do whatever you want to do that makes you happy and you feel best presents your brand or your song. And that's kind of what I've done is basically just thought, I'm just going to post whenever I want, whatever I want at a time that I want to. And people who will be drawn to me, your music, drawn to you, will invest. They'll be there, they'll engage. So don't be afraid to kind of just think, eh, I'm just going to do what I want to do anyway. Um, find yourself a good distributor to distribute your music on. This has taken me a while and I was kind of stuck with one one platform for a while and unfortunately I wasn't quite happy towards the end of, of what I was getting for how much I was paying so I would highly recommend doing some investigation and some research into that a lot of people were asking me like how do you get music out there like how does it work so basically if you have a song that you want to promote out into the world you have to find somehow of getting it out there. It can be on SoundCloud, it can be on Bandcamp, which is another really cool uh, platform which has come back to the surface. Um, and then you have all these other distributors which can then push it out to Spotify, to iTunes, all of that sort of stuff. That's um, pretty important and it's, you know, it, that's a guaranteed way for you to get your music out there to a wider audience instead of just your mum, your dad, your granddad, you know, which is great and sometimes if that's who you just want to hit, it's just your family and friends, that's cool. You don't need to go down the whole distribution path. But if you want to reach out, definitely look and invest in that. I'm personally now on DistroKid, which I found to be super easy, really great. And they're so quick when you, you, when you put stuff in. But, you know, some people don't like DistroKid. Some people are on CD Baby. Whichever distribution site is best for you, stick with it and just go with it. And then it's all about maybe getting in touch with some creative people. If you aren't the most creative at like thinking of artwork or all this sort of stuff, um, there's some fantastic websites I can recommend. Fiverr is a huge, amazing website, which I've used plenty over the past couple of years. Um, I've had people on Fiverr do me some lyric videos, some CD covers. My first ever logo, Becky Lawrence logo, was done by someone on Fiverr. And it's pretty reasonable as well. It's quite reasonably priced. You don't have to break the bank if, you know, you don't have that much money to spare. Or just reach out to friends and family and say, hey, look, you know, I don't have much money, but it will give you exposure, all of this sort of stuff. People are generally really willing to help if you ask for it. And if they can't, then it is what it is. You've asked. Um, so, yeah, I'm really grateful that I found people that I can just say, hey, can you just help me with some artworks and this, you know, some photos, that sort of thing. So that's another big thing I would say. And yeah, it can seem really overwhelming and daunting. And I think it only is if you overthink things. Like I am in touch with so many amazing artists who approach the music industry all very differently. You know, I have, I'm lucky that I have a manager now, so I don't necessarily need to put so much pressure on myself now. I just put the pressure on her. <laughs> So she is, you know, running around looking for gigs and helping me with artwork and all of this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, you, you'll you only put that pressure on yourself if you want to. You, this doesn't have to be stressful. It can all be fun. And that's another thing. Don't lose sight of the fun with this. We're all doing this because we're creative. We want to push stuff out because we love it. But don't lose sight of the process. That's sometimes the funnest part. Yeah, having it out there and, and getting the streams and all of that is great. But don't lose sight of the process because it is fun. When I released the Christmas song, I had so much fun because I had friends involved. My mum was involved. It was a really special time. And those are the things that you really do remember the most. So hold on to those little moments. Um, yeah, I mean... I'm still I'm still kind of figuring my way through this all you know I've only been kind of actively pushing and writing my own stuff since 2017 so you know I've still got a lot to learn I think but if there's anything else that you kind of want to hear me discuss about that or you have something you want to say obviously do drop them in the comments I really want to hear what, what you guys have got to say but I just think 
just be as honest as you as you can don't push yourself too much just ultimately just have fun you know life is too short if there's a single you want to push out and you think oh i don't know how people are going to react just do it just do it who cares if you want to do it just do it push it out there i'm sure there's other stuff i could mention and that i could say but i feel like i've kind of covered some of the basic stuff but yeah, still on this crazy journey with, with music, but I'm just having fun this year, not putting too much pressure on myself. I've got a couple of releases in the pipeline, so. So yeah, so thank you very much for watching and listening, and do stay tuned for another episode very soon. Bye-bye, guys.